Hi, Neil. Uh, Igor Danchenko, the Russian national accused of being the primary subsource for Christopher Steele, found not guilty. Again, Igor Danchenko not guilty uh, in a court. A jury of his peers, 12 jurors, decided uh, they would not put him behind bars or not find him guilty on four counts of lying to the FBI. Now, Danchenko uh, was in the courtroom at the time. We don't know exactly if he breathed a sigh of relief. We had to come out and get this news out as soon as possible. However, uh, this is part of John Durham's investigation, the special counsel appointed by then Attorney General Bill Barr back in May 2019 to look at the origins of the narrative that pinned Donald Trump to Russia. Uh, back in 2016, early 2017, we covered extensively uh, efforts by the FBI and others to investigate Trump. Uh, that was kind of the purpose of the entire Mueller report. So John Durham was tasked with looking at the origins of the Russia uh, narrative to see where it came from. He charged a Hillary Clinton campaign attorney named Michael Sussman last year. Michael Sussman was on trial also for lying to the FBI. He was acquitted in May. Uh, and this is John Durham, the special counsel's second loss uh, in a court of law. We've been told that John Durham is still going to move forward with a narrative, something written, a, a report, a full report for the public to be able to see, kind of weaving this entire narrative and, and really putting a bow on this more than three-year investigation. But right now, we can tell you Igor Danchenko found not guilty on all four counts. Neil, jurors began deliberating yesterday at two in the afternoon, went for three hours, went all day today. We were kind of wondering what was going on today. And then about 40 minutes ago, they had a question about uh, a conversation that took place with an FBI agent. Then about 20 minutes later, they came back and they said not guilty on all four counts. Neil. One of the counts, a fifth count, was dropped by the judge a little earlier. So I'm just wondering what this does to special counsel John Durham's case going forward. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens. And that what was dropped is was a a um, a conversation that Danchenko allegedly had with a man named Chuck Dolan, who's a Democratic operative. Uh, the special counsel said that Danchenko spoke to Dolan and used some of that information in the Steele dossier, that document that was, you know, trying to take down Donald Trump. However, Danchenko's attorneys and the judge ultimately said Dolan and Danchenko communicated via email, so they technically did not speak. Therefore, Judge Anthony Tranga threw out that one charge on a technicality. What happened today, Neil, was four different counts uh, dealing with Danchenko talking to an FBI agent named Kevin Helson and repeating a story about uh, speaking to who he believed was a Russian that may have been giving some dirt on Donald Trump. Well, Durham said that never happened. He said that Danchenko lied to this FBI agent four times. Danchenko's attorney said, you can't prove that it didn't happen because, while it may not be in phone records, there's WhatsApp, there's Signal, there's other encrypted services that people use to communicate. Ultimately, it appears the jury believed what the defense team had to say. And I, I will add, Neil, the defense team did not even put on a defense. They not mm. only didn't call Danchenko, they didn't even put on a defense. So when Durham and the government was done last Friday, Danchenko's team effectively said, you know, we're done too. You just have to wonder whether this could be Durham's swan song here, that, that, that this was something that, you know, there, there was great expectation here, uh, and it's just fizzled. Well, you know, we don't know if John Durham's going to charge anyone else. And, you know, legal experts have said, it's unlikely because you look at the statute of limitations. We're talking about stuff that happened in 2016, 2017. We're at six years now from 2016. In, in many cases, the statute of limitations has expired. So there's, it, there's not real a clear path to see if he's going to charge somebody else. But if not, and we've known this all along, that John Durham is someone that's very careful, that's very calculated, that pays attention to detail and someone that takes his time. And I think from a three and a half year investigation, we know that this, what happened today, may not be his final act. It may be his final act in a courtroom. However, we do expect some sort of narrative uh, to come out, a final Durham report, just like we saw the Mueller report. And by the way, 
even though John Durham is a special counsel, he still falls under the branch of the Department of Justice and Attorney General Merrick Garland. And Merrick Garland, the AG, has been very hands-off, uh, allowing Durham to do his thing. He does not want to get in the way. He said, you know, I've renewed Durham's budget. I've let him do his thing. So while we don't 100 percent know if Merrick Garland will give the sign off for John Durham to release his report, I suspect, having covered Merrick Garland, uh, that he will go ahead and give that sign off uh, to allow that Durham report to be released. Is it? Um, I'm just getting some information sure. from uh, Jay Gibson, our justice producer. He said uh, Igor Danchenko hugged his wife, who was in tears. And again, not guilty on all four counts, Neil. Uh, you know, uh, I'm wondering in, in the case of Merrick Garland whether, you know, by not intruding in the case, he's just letting, not that Durham's imploding, I don't want to imply that, but, but that this whole case might be imploding. What do you think? It's, it's hard to tell, honestly. Yeah. It's hard to tell because I, there was a lot, Neil, that John Durham wanted to bring into this trial that Judge Anthony Tranga would not let him bring into this trial for evidentiary reasons and really other reasons. Got so it. I think John Durham, if you would ask him, and I wish we could ask him, and I wish he would do an interview with us, but he's probably not going to do an interview. I wish we could ask and, and see if he felt like, you know, he didn't get a fair shake from the beginning, if he would do things differently. I would love to sit down and have an opportunity to talk to him. And, you know, we, we have the microphone set up right behind my shoulder here, and I suspect we'll hear from Dan Chanko's team We'll try to reach out to Durham and, and his team, but likely we'll get some sort of statement from him, which is which is normal. I mean, the government right. typically does not come out and speak if, if they lose a case. So that's not abnormal if he doesn't speak. David, thank you very much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.